Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to another exciting edition of Gospel Draw. My name is Doris Satanga. I'm going to be your host today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Gospel Drum provides a platform for men and women of God to share with us what God is doing in their ministries. Today we have a woman of God all the way from England. You'll meet her when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gospel Drum again. My name is Doris Atanga. I'm going to be your host today. We have Pastor Faith Okrafo all the way from the UK. Pastor Faith, you're welcome to Gospel Drum. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. What brings you here to the, U to the US? Let me start with that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to continue our mission in reaching out to the people of USA to hear the story of Melkosh uh, charity and also to launch my premier book which is called Melkosh Burst Forth Poems and Short Stories. Okay, Melkosh M Mission International and yes. so you're here now to, you have a book. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the book Burst Forth, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about this book that God has inspired you to put together. Well, it's a book to provoke people into action to burst forth. Okay. And it's a book that um, the Lord inspired me to write. It's a combination of poems that 
um, I had compiled from 2003, 2011, to last year 2014, and this year 2015. And um, I believe that we are t this year is a year that God has decreed a year of restoration. And so I believe it's a book that would be timely to the world to reach out to people who have been pregnant with dreams, pregnant with visions, who are looking to bring forth that, um, their babies, their fruits, their seed. The word burst forth means to bloom, to flower, to bring forth, to suddenly appear, to, you know, to come into side, sight suddenly. So we're believing that um, the time of being obscured is over. Okay. This is a time to burst forth, a time to suddenly appear, a time to bring out um, babies of long tarried dreams that or projects that we have been procrastinating about and right. it's a time of restoration. That's wonderful. And it, it's taking you this long to put this together. So I want to assume that it's a package that's loaded. I believe so, yes. So you said how, from 2003, so more than 10 years you've been working on this. Um, to be quite honest, the book, the Lord had commissioned me to start the book last year, okay. February. Um, I w actually, the Lord w woke me up one day from my sleep. You know how it is sometimes yeah. when um, he, he wants to speak to you. And uh, I took my pen and started writing. And that day I penned two poems and the Lord gave me the title of the book. He gave me the image, the vision of what he wanted us to present. and. Um, I started busting forth in my own way to bring the book to, um, to, you know, through the birth canal and into the world. And um, the 2003 poem had been written at a time when I had just given my life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're in love with God that first season and it's like you can't get enough of right. him. So whilst I was compiling the book, the Lord kept reminding me of poems that I'd written prior and you know god is ancient of days that which he had decreed you know in the days of old still manifests in the physical so whatever we bring on to, to the lord be it 10 years ago 12 years ago that's which he wants to do now the old and the new can be used right. and so the book is a com combination of um poems and also short stories that would empower people onto purpose amen I, I like what you said about, you know, poems that you had written years ago. And a lot of times we don't realize that the little things that God takes us through, the little experiences, it comes to a point where when God finds you ready or wants to usher you into a new experience, mm -hmm. then he begins to bring all those things together. And you're talking about, you know, those poems you wrote when you just gave your life to the Lord. I think it's exciting. I'm looking forward to reading that book. Any plans about launching this book? Yes, um, which is why I'm here. Um, we will be doing the official launch on the 15th, Sunday the 15th of March, which is in two weeks. Okay. And um, we will be doing that at Temple of Praise International Church. So we're inviting you, please attend. The address will be on the screen uh, and it's based, the, the location is at Beltsville, okay. Maryland. Okay. And you're welcome to come from 10 a.m. with the service and then it flows from 12.30 to um, 1, 1 o'clock, 1.30. Okay. And um, so we, it's going to be a two-part launch mm -hmm. because what the Lord had instructed me to do was to give the book free of charge to the world. Okay. So it's a first fruit offering unto the Lord and a free gift to the world. And um, on, the fifth, on the 21st of March, mm -hmm. the book would be released to the world via our website, which is www.melkoshmissioninternational.org. Okay. And you can download the book either via PDF format or Word document, and it'll be available for as many people who are ready to burst forth okay so even when the when it's finally um published it's still going to be free and definitely um, we'll have it on amazon as well okay. um from the 21st as well so you could either go to amazon or via our website and okay. download the book oh that's beautiful that's beautiful and um 
I was going to ask you this question, but I'll hold it on for, you know, for later. So now, are you, do you have plans to do the same launch in England, or are you just going to do a one-time um, thing here? Yes, we, um, I'm considering, because of course, um, <laughs> England is my home, and because the book is meant to be a world book, I intend to also launch it in Africa as well, in Sierra Leone, Wonderful. and um, sometime this year. And so we, we will, we're intending to work on having the book launched in the U United Kingdom when I return and um, as many people who are ready you know to come forth mm -hmm. and receive that which God is saying I challenge you it's a book that would change your life um, I am a living example because you know I have basically used myself as a guinea pig mm -hmm. and uh, you know burst forth in the process as i was writing mm -hmm. the book the book challenged me mm -hmm. um, because the book was inspired by the holy spirit he teaches mm -hmm. and so as you're writing I, I i'm the author i may be the human being writing but it was the lord downloading that which he wanted at such a time as this perfect how much praying you know i know you're a pastor a woman of god uh, how much praying are you putting behind this? And the reason for this question is, you know, because salvation is free, people tend to just think about that Jesus mm. thing as a joke. People would rather, you know, have tens of thousands of dollars to come mm. and pay for their salvation. But when you tell somebody it's just confessing Christ, they mm. think it's too easy. So, you know, if you're giving out books that are free, you know, and know you're doing on the instruction of the Holy Spirit, how much praying, if there's any, are you doing for the people that God has really inspired you to reach out to with this book? Um, the prayer is continuous. The prayer has been since the Lord had instructed me to write the book, okay. which was February, 5th of February, 2014. Okay. We're now on, today's the 1st of March, so uh -huh. it's been a whole year of praying, Amen. prayerfully writing the book. Amen. And I believe the book has come from the very, very loins of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So um, I say that um, God has given us free will, mm -hmm. um, and the book is not just for people who are looking to know God, uh -huh. but those who already know God, but are facing limitations. So the book, Boss Forth, would be um, enable them to break forth from their limitations and then to bring forth new beginnings, mm -hmm. new beginnings, hope, charity, faith mm -hmm. and restitution. So I believe that as many as those who have been prompted by the Holy Spirit to read the book, Amen. they would receive that which God has in store for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, you're listening to Pastor Faith. Um, she's done a lot of praying. She's the guinea pig of what the Holy Spirit is doing through this book. And a lot of times people don't re realize the importance of prayer in anything that we do, especially anything that's led of the Holy Spirit. We'll come back. Pastor Faith has a lot that she's doing to impact this generation. We're going to take a short break and we'll come back and hear about her outreach ventures in Africa. Stay tuned. <music>
Tuta maisha bora tunasahau Utafuta Mungu ni bora utafuteni Ufalme wa Mungu kwanza hayo mengine Yote yatafuata Hey una mwingine ila niye kimbilio tegemeo lako niye Umtazamie nani ila niye Yesu niye baba niye Welcome back to Gospel Drum again. My name is Doris and we have Pastor Faith O'Crafor. Pastor Faith, you've, where are you from? I know you're from England, but where are you from? I'm from Sierra Leone, from West Sierra Africa. Leone. Yes. And you're based in England. Yes. Wonderful. And I see Melkosh Mission International, you have this outreach program. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing in Africa? Well, the charity Melkosh Mission in International was birthed in, two, the vision of Melkosh Mission International was birthed in 2004, mm -hmm. but the mission itself started off in 2008, mm -hmm. and it's a charity birth to equip, educate, and empower amputees whose limbs were cut off during the 10-year war in Sierra Leone. Our beneficiaries are the victims of the blood diamond fueled war in Sierra Leone that lasted for 10 years. Okay, when you say amputees, and if this is a ministry that, you know, is, is really taking most of your time, how many, I mean, is it just, because I mean, I'm thinking of amputees like a few people, is that a whole, I mean, how many people are, are you really targeting? At the present moment, we in our mission, we have 70 amputees that we directly work with. Wow. There are thousands of amputees in Sierra Leone scattered in different areas, in the provinces and, and in the capital of Sierra Leone. But we work directly with those who live in Freetown which, um, and the suburbs of Freetown, western area, rural and western area, urban. And so we also work with the war widows, mm -hmm. widows whose um, husbands died from their afflictions, the, the afflictions of their amput um, amputation, because many of these people also um, had their flesh actually rotten in, and because there wasn't any medication at that time, they lost their husbands um, through their amputation. And we also work with the orphans of um, deceased amputees okay. and the and the children of the living amputees. Okay. So this is the first time I've heard about somebody reaching out to amputees. So I'm thinking I've never known that there's a, you know, it's a large population of people. So during this war, so it was targeted more on, you know, cutting people's limbs and leaving them to suffer. Or, you know, because for the most part, people they would just kill people and people would die, but. So when you say that, I see that it's a bigger picture than what I think I know. So you have a lot of them, you know, those who didn't die, their wives, their children. So those are the population that you're targeting. Definitely. Um, I would say, I'll give you a bit of a short um, synopsis. In 2004, the Lord had, I was in a conference when the Lord gave me a scripture in the book of Micah 4. And I always talk about that because you always have to go to the beginning. Right. Even the Bible says in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the book of Micah um, 4, 6 says that in that day, I will gather her that is lame and make her a remnant, her that is outcast, a strong nation. Mm -hmm. I had visited 2000, uh, um, Sierra Leone in 2001 just at the end of the war and um, because my dad was very ill and he had been attacked by the rebels. Um, for three months, we 
were not um, sure if he was either dead or alive. Mm. And so my family also experienced the ravages of the war. Our homes mm. were looted, properties were destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to Sierra Leone, I saw the destruction in Sierra Leone, the you know human and capital destruction. And I had a burden in my heart to help, but the, the I took, it was just so overwhelming for me. I wasn't sure of what to do, where to start. And so when the Lord commissioned me in 2004, I started praying. Mm -hmm. um, earlier you had said, how long have you prayed? Well, I prayed about Melkosh mission for four years, three and a half going on four years mm -hmm. before going to Sierra Leone okay. to start the mission. And um, these people are the rejects of Sierra Leone okay. and God has heard their cries. Mm -hmm. And just like how the people in the days of old in Egypt were crying, you know, for a savior to come and Moses came. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, you know, what God did in the past, he can still do mm -hmm. now. And so God is in the business of, he's still in the business of bringing fragmented lives together and making them whole Wonderful. and so i obeyed the voice of god mm -hmm. and i i have not stopped since okay and what has the ebola virus and its effect have to do with part of your ministry reaching out to them okay well um of course the ebola entered um, ebola virus um, we had the first few cases which we became aware of. I was in the diaspora in the UK when we heard about the cases in April. And um, by May, it was, you know, it was in the news and everyone knew that, you know, had quite a high percentage of people. Mm -hmm. And so um, in August, September, September to be precise, mm -hmm. the government had um, made a mandate that there would be a three days lockdown in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And so we as a charity knew that we needed to make sure that our amputees were fed during those three days of lockdown mm -hmm. because they had a higher chance of dying from starvation mm -hmm. as opposed to Ebola. But prior to that, in July, we had already shipped thousands of personal protective equipment to our beneficiaries, to people who are in poor communities, for them to be able to protect themselves so that if perchance that there was any case in the camps that they live in, because amputees leave, leave in camps, okay. they would have been in a better place to protect themselves with what we had availed mm. to them. Because in the book of First John, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper mm. and be in good health, even mm. as thy soul prosper, mm -hmm. prospereth. Mm. So we believe that we needed them to be in good health. And um, we also reached out to the Ebola orphans. Mm -hmm. We've taken a good percentage of these kids on our wings mm. and we're taking care of their welfare. Mm -hmm. Also working now on a campaign which is called Sponsor a Child and Raise a Champion. Okay. And um, the essence of that is to get people to come on board and sponsor these Ebola orphans who have lost their mothers to Ebola, who um, have lost their homes, who have been stigmatized because some of these kids, um, when their parents passed, couldn't really live in the communities because of the community that they lived in because of stigmatization. Majority oh. of these people also lose their belongings because they're actually, be the belongings get burned because they're infected. Oh, yes. Okay, did you lose any of your people during this Ebola crisis? God answers prayer. And, um, as I speak to you now, we have not lost a single amputee. Wonderful. And do you have staff working? You know, part of your mi ministry working in in, in Sierra Leone. In yes, definitely. Okay, with you. Definitely, we have our staff in Sierra Leone, and mm -hmm. they do our Ebola Drive project, which we do intermittently, where we we take gloves, um, disinfectants, soaps, uh, mask. Um, antibacterial wipes and we distribute it amongst our amputees on an intermittent basis okay. base so that they are, you know, um, they're equipped in, in the case that, that there is any, you know, um, case of Ebola, mm -hmm. they would have been able to take precautions. 
and then and and another thing with the work that we do we also did sensitization mm -hmm. so as early as july we were sensitizing uh um, the children of the amputees who go to the academy that we have for um, if, um, war orphans okay. and so we, they were sensitized enough to know what to do who to, not to touch people and okay. um, be careful signs to look out for so okay. and we do that drive I mean a lot of people know now about the Ebola and what to do but our equipment drive is on a continuous basis until we get rid of this evil called Ebola Okay, you mentioned something earlier about about uh, sponsored child. Prior to this, how have you been in funded? You know, in terms of reaching out to these people. Well, uh, work is basically done via events. We do fundraising events, okay. and we raise funds through that. And we also appeal to people to come on board and do mo monthly partnership with our mission. Okay. We do not get any international funding, and neither do we get any governmental funding mm -hmm. so our funding are directly through the fundraising campaigns we do or events okay and any challenges you're facing doing this it can be um challenging and we have we found it very challenging because when i i started off the mission when I went to Sierra Leone in 2008 and I self-funded the mission right up to 2011 and I brought the mission within the community, pre predominantly the Sierra Leone community in the United Kingdom, summer of 2011. A lot of people at the time were very disillusioned about charities because you have charities who do not really do what they say. Right. And so we had quite a lot of closed doors, we were um, a lot of um, remarks were made, but we plodded on because the mission had been given by God and not man, and we know God never failed. Mm. And so because of our transparency and our accountability, we won the hearts of those who were disillusioned. But at the same time, it can be challenging because people become they go through donor fatigue, mm -hmm. wherein they're tired of giving because you have so many charities mm -hmm. coming up. I mean, with Ebola, we had so many initiatives that you know came forth. Yeah, yeah. And so, but we have basically stayed true to our cause and doing the true work that God requires us to do to d care for the poor and the needy, mm -hmm. the orphans, the fatherless, mm -hmm. and the widows. Amen. I want to ask you this question. That's probably my last question. It's kind of challenging. Is there any difference in what you're doing, reaching out to, like through a charitable organization, being a pastor? You know, a lot of people are doing this. Is there any difference with you being a pastor in doing the same thing they're doing? I believe that being trained in the ministry of God mm -hmm. um, equipped me to be able to deal with the challenges that came forth. So mm -hmm. being a pastor has its bonuses because you're equipped for um, the dry seasons mm -hmm. when there's nothing but the word of God that you have to stand on. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that having the word of God mm -hmm. in you, because when we go on our missions, we just don't provide food, clothing, or what they need, or earthly needs mm. we also d deal with the spiritual needs Beautiful. and so we do altar calls um, lives are saved during our mm. missions and so we are not just a charity we're christian charity mm. birth from god directly from god wonderful wonderful now now this explains you've been doing this now you're coming to us now with a book saying burst forth and this is you bursting forth Indeed. and touching <laughs> lives which I think that this is what God wants to see us really really do in our generation before you get to you know talk to the public do you have any example you know about you know bursting forth that you really really want to you know share before we conclude um in my book, what had touched me the most had been the story of the woman of the, with the issue of blood. Okay. Now, this woman had had her infirmity for 12 years, mm -hmm. and the physicians were not able to do anything for her, or the situation worsened. And 
I mean, being a woman, we know how it is when we go through the monthly cycle. And then having a woman who had has elongated for 12 years, 12, I mean, 12 years of bleeding and not having, you know, strength, because if you're losing blood, you lose strength. Right. And this woman, when she heard that Jesus was in her town, she left her home. That was a burst forth action, mm -hmm. a burst forth action of faith. Hearing the word of God, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. This woman took a leap of faith and left her home. In those days, a woman who was um, in her blood flow was deemed unclean. Mm -hmm. And so leaving her home could have cost her her life. Right. For every step that she took, she, her flow would have touched the ground because such was the flow was so heavy. Right. But she took a leap of faith, went forth, and she, in her mind she said, only if I could touch the hem of Jesus' garment, mm -hmm. I will be made whole. That desire also was a burst forth desire, mm -hmm. and she touched the hem. She, I mean, her desire was not to touch the Lord. You have men and women of God who say, oh, my sweat, my handkerchief, or oh, my laying of hands. Right. No, this woman just said the hem. Right. And when um, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus felt that you leave him. And he right. said, who touched me? Right. And this lady burst forth because she could have kept quiet. And she testified that was a burst forth. So this woman burst forth in so many testimonies. And when I think of her story, a lot of people don't really get to understand what it means um, having an infirmity for 12 years. Now, many people have infirmities. It may not be the issue of blood, mm -hmm. but maybe uh, um, an impediment, maybe a marital impediment for 12 years, mm -hmm. barrenness of 12 years, um, worklessness of 12 years, lack of 12 years, closed heavens of 12 years. I'm challenging you, get that book, bust forth, the time to favor Zion is now. Amen. Amen. Why don't you continue? Just look in the camera and talk to the people of God who are hungry. They, you know, they might want to bust for it, but they don't know how to do it. And they need that release of the anointing from you so they can be able to explode. I leave with you this short message, um, viewers. I am a living testimony of how God has changed my life. I was at a place in my life when everything again in my life was challenged and I found God. He was there, but I sought him out. Are you in that place where you're saying everything is going contrary to what you thought it would have been? Reach out to God, seek him. Seek him, the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. When you seek him, you will burst forth. The additions would come. Additions that you have not merited would come. Additions that would catapult you to your greatness would come. So I challenge you today, find a Bible believing church and go and worship your Lord. Also, before you do that, if you have not given your life to God, please say this short prayer with me. Repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord, as a sinner. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive my sins. Lord, where I have missed it in words, thought, or deeds, have mercy. Lord, today, I ask that you come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. Lord, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died for my sins and he rose after three days. Lord, I invite you, take all of me. I say bye-bye to sin. As of today, I am born again. If you've done that prayer with me, congratulations. If you're already a Christian and you want to burst forth, do not be complacent and say, I have known God for years. He's given me everything. There is still more. Enjoy the being a heir of God. Enjoy being 
the daughter and the son of God, as kings and queens of the Most High God, we are meant to reach realms which we have never ever um, thought of or imagined. So my challenge to you is continue knowing your God, continue questing for more, continue with your supplication to reach to the highest zenith that God has availed for you. Bust forth into dimensions, bust forth to help, bust forth in your faith, bust forth as an instrument of salvation, bust forth and be made whole. I congratulate, I congratulate you and I you know, welcome you into your new dawn as you bust forth. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Faith. Thank, Thank you. you. When are you going back to England? If I may pray. I've got another month here. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. How can we get a copy of the, the book? Well, um, I invite you to the book launch. Okay. And um, even if you can't make it, you would get seven copies of the book, of the hard copy. Okay. And um, two would be for you and the producer. And mm -hmm. the five would be given to the audience. So get in touch with Doris here if you need the book and um, shalom. Wonderful. I want to thank you so much. Um, you are a living testimony of somebody who has bursted forth. Sometimes you start doing something and then when you look back at what God is doing, it looks like a new thing God is doing, but he already started even with the, the, the boldness to go back to Africa to look at the people and to obey God and you know, just believe that God can use Indeed. you. I think that is the, you know, is something that's praiseworthy. Want to thank you so much. We hope to have you again on Gospel Drum next time you come around. Thank you. And to our viewers, uh, I hope you enjoyed Pastor Faith O'Crawford from England, from Mekosh Mission International, and. Uh, if you want a copy of her book, if you want, if you just want to hear more about the, the launching and everything, shoot us an email at staff at africangospelonline.com and we'll give you information as to the book launch and everything that you need to know. And even if you have, need a copy of the book, I'm excited. I know it's going to be a blessing to me and I know it's going to be a blessing to anyone who will get it, the privilege, the chance, the opportunity to read the book. But we want to wish you the best week ever. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.